Flight Boss, bitch, you know, for sure. You and I listen to the Mind of the Move. Flight Boss, the Archangel Uriel. And Dolo here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And you know, I still get upset sometimes when I still see simple things on this earth being misinterpreted. Like, and people are so quick to, to trust everything that scientists and other people say and believe. And the people that they're listening to, they be missing some of the most simplest shit. Like, this is what you have to understand. Seeing is receiving. When you are looking, looking is not something that you are emitting outward. When you are looking, you are looking into something that you received. And you may not understand that. This is why when, if you have your eyes closed for a long period of time and you open your eyes, your eyes hurt. Because your eyes start receiving the light. Now, here's why it looks different on Earth. Because objects are, are made. So you are an object on Earth the same way other things are objects. So in this universe, in this realm of reality, everything is just light bouncing off other lights. Solid things bouncing off. Other, like for something to be... A, the, the spark like a light or glisten, it became an energy. So it had to be a frequency than a vibration first. And when they came together, it emits an energy of it, an aura, something that matters. And then that's where the light is emitted. So you are your own light. Everybody their own light. Every physical thing on this earth is, is a sense of a light. And it's light bouncing off other lights. You see what I'm saying? So when you are looking at something, you're receiving the shape and form of the light spectrum of it. You're, you're not looking directly at it. You're, catch, you're catching the filters of light. And since you're in a realm of light, a.k.a. Gaia, Torah, Earth, then you're in a circumference of light. So everything on Earth is going to appear like physical things that's already made is outside of you, is externally. But the only reason you're able to see it, if it's some type of light bouncing off of it, and bounce into your eyes. See, your senses is all receiving. This is not something you're putting out. I think the breath is the only thing you actually put out. You breathe in first, though. And then when you breathe, that's the only thing you actually put out. But your eyesight, you receive light. When you hear something, you receive sound. When you touch something, you receive the resistance. When you, when you taste something, you received it in your mouth. So when you look at space, when you look in an outer space, what you're seeing is not actually what you're seeing. What you're seeing is light. Hold on. I don't have time for this. It's not, not today. I don't think I'm doing it. Hold on. As soon as I'm ready to do a video, and when I'm not doing no video, the phone don't ring except cell phones. Get the fuck out of here. No, no, you're not gonna do that. Now, for the most part, um, now when we're looking at light, look at um, when you're outside the planet, right? All the stars and planets and suns that you see don't even appear that way. So, all the science, all the astronomy, all the things that's correlated to how these things appear to be and things of that nature may not even be true. You can't even really trust these things. I'm going to tell you how you can, but for the most part, you can't even trust these things because you you have built the science thinking that you are looking at these things. No, you're receiving the light of these things. That's why you will have a scientist telling you you're seeing it how it looked in the past because the light may have not even received to your eyes yet. So when you do actually receive that light, you actually see it from a time that is not in right now. But this is what's happening. See, if you was in if you took yourself out of earth and put yourself in space, you're not gonna see the sun. You're not gonna see you you're not you may be, you might not even see the moon. Or you may be though, but you you're not gonna see no planets. You're not gonna see no stars or nothing. You're gonna see pure darkness. You know why? Because when you put yourself in space, you made yourself an object like that. And if you don't have a, a conscious brain or you're not in one of those vessels to receive that much big of an impact of light and things of that nature, you're going to get you're going to get swallowed up or detached or explode or separated between your body because it can't handle that. But it's almost like you are an object like it. 
So when you are in space, you're just a frequency vibration like everything else. So you're not receiving no light. You are the light. So same way your light is bouncing off other objects, same way these objects' lights is bouncing off you. But these objects is way bigger than you. So when you when they light bounce off you, it may explode your ass or or it may deteriorate your ass real fast or do something with your body to transform it real fast. See, that's what it is. But when you're in Earth, you're in a womb, you're in a body, you're you're in a you're in a realm of reality that's big enough to handle the reflectors of that. So when when you're on Earth and you and say you're looking up out of Earth, what you're seeing you're receiving to the light. You see what I'm saying? So so when the light the light gets filtered, and since you're and since you're a person that's in Earth, it gets filtered and spread out in enough spectrums that your eyes is able to handle, that your eyes is able to receive. That's why if you so close to the sun, your eyes are burned. Or, or your eyes are, it's, you're receiving too much. Your eyes can't receive that much. So, based upon where you're at and your location on Earth, that's how much your eyes is able to receive. And as you being in a human, it receives as based upon the average human can receive light for the eyesight. You see what I'm saying? Now, for an example, when you look in that space, right, and you see in planets, you see in planets and suns, and they appear to be rotating, or they appear to be spinning, or they appear to be moving. What you have to understand is those actual things is not what's is not why it looked like it's moving in that way. You need to understand the environment and 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 the atmosphere and the aura that those lights is getting filtered through is is the one that's moving. Is the one that appear to be spinning. Is the one that's uh, shaping. So if, if if you see the Earth appears to be rotating, that's because the atmosphere is rotating. If you see a star, or like they say, they got satellites that show a galaxy is going in a spiral. No, what's spiral, what's spiraling is the light coming through Earth, the light coming from where it's coming from, right? And then once it gets to bounce off the light that we're in, which is Earth, we get to see what that light is doing. And once we receive that light, it appears that it's coming to us in a swirl, but really it's just that light. Starting to shape, take shape and form and swirl around the atmosphere, around the, uh, the surroundings, around the, 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 you know what I'm saying, around the surroundings and the atmosphere of the earth. So that's what you see in this round. You're not seeing the actual galaxy spiral. You actually see in the light of that galaxy spiral down. So when it gets filtered through the atmosphere, and and the earth whatever whatever however the atmosphere is moving however the globe and and the world that you're around however that air is moving that's how the light gonna appear to be moving when you're seeing it so it's, it takes shape and light takes shape and form of whatever realm of reality it is aka the frequency takes shape and form over whatever vibration it goes into whatever experience it goes into to become a soul so when you see light in anywhere in the universe this is this universal law Light gets shot out, but then light takes shape and form over the dark matter, aka the feelings and emotions and the vibrations of the space that is going into. So say you in space and you just looking at all space because it's all space because of your weak 3D eyes. Now put yourself in my eyes. I'm Archangel Uriel. I got seven dimensional eyes, eight dimensional. It's space within space. So this location is space, frequency is vibrating different than this location of uh, space. So say the way this frequency vibration of space may take a shape and form that you can't see yet, that this shape and form is taking. So when light travel, right, say it travel through this space first, whatever frequency vibration that space is vibrating at, say it, say it may take a shape and they got a group of stars there that may take a specific shape of a, of a cross or something like that. Then the light illusion goes around that. You see what I'm saying? So when you so when you see scientists who got satellites or something, they'd be like, okay, look, this is what this shape like. This is what this shape like. No, you don't know what that is. All you seeing is the light going around it, and the light is, and when you receive the light, that enables you to see what shape and form that is. It's like you you are already a light, but the only way I can see you is if, if some lights is on, right? And then I can see the shape and form of that your light is taking, and it's taking the shape and form of this realm of reality. This round is this body. You see what I'm saying? So you go. You only see things like that because you're on a Earth. But if you was in space, you wouldn't see the sun. 
the sun is still there. The frequency vibration of it is still there. And, and what it really is is still there. But you don't, you ain't going to be able to see it the way you see it, uh, how it looked if you was on earth. That's why I be saying fire, water, earth, air don't even look like that shit. It just looked like that because of the perspective you, uh, the, the, the relative and the perspective and the rotation that you're on. And since you're on Gaia, you're on earth. That's how it's going to appear to be. So for an example, say we about to have a hurricane or a tornado. So we know in the atmosphere, the clouds and stuff are spinning, right? So say you was to look in the space that day, you want to see how the moon look or you want to see how the sun look. The sun and everything going to look like that. So when the light takes shape and form here, you're only seeing it with the atmosphere and everything is taking shape and form of. You're not seeing what that actually look like. You're seeing what kind of light you're receiving and what kind of shape and form that may appear to be from uh from your position. From uh from your position. Uh, but, uh, uh, now that you already see that from your, just from your position, but if you was actually in space, you won't see it that way. It may not be a spiral, it may not be round, it may not be flat, it may not be nothing. However you receive in the light, that's how it's going to appear to be, and that's how it's going to look. Um, uh, now also when we talk about, um, see, people don't understand that. So everything you've ever known about astronomy and astrology could be wrong. Now I'm going to tell you, why why it is what it is. You see what I'm saying? And why because now this is important and this is gonna help people understand the difference between Vedic and um and, and sidereal and western. You have to understand these are not things you're supposed to compare. These are separate sciences. Eastern and Western astrology and astronomy are separate things. Both of these things are qualified to be used but they're all they're separate things these not these are not some this is not something you're supposed to be like oh should i use this or should i use that my point exactly eastern um or vedic this this is trying to explain to you as if you was in space or if you was looking at things from the perspective as if you was on the sun you should have said if you lived on the sun so you're up there Looking face to face with these things, so every all the stars is going to appear to be where they where they ex, where they're at exactly. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you have to dissect it. So for an example, you got the the, the galaxy Andromeda that's close to us. It's it's way, but to us it's way behind our constellation Aries and stuff like that. So to us, if, if we was living on the sun, we had to say Andromeda is where it's at, and the group of Aries stars is in like. The Pisces constellation now. So we'll be like, okay, all the Aries stars then travel to move into the Pisces constellation. So we have to look at it like that. Now, when you talk about Western, right, and tropical astrology, this is from the representation of how you see things from an Earth perspective. If you're on Earth. So if you're on Earth, for an example, if the sun right here, and it's like amongst the amongst this galaxy and amongst these stars to know where they're exactly at, right? And Earth. Gaia is down here, then say the group of Aries stars is right here, right next to the sun, right? And this, if you live on the sun or you in space, you're able to see where they actually at. You're able to see, okay, the, the cluster of Aries stars is in the Pisces constellation of area of life right now. All the all the Pisces stars that moved out and moved into the Aquarius area of life, right? And then you'll be like you'll be able to see this. And be able to see exactly where Andromeda, Andromeda is at. Okay, Andromeda is right here. And you'll be able to see the effects that Aries have to Andromeda and what Andromeda have to Aries. But say, but tropical, western, boom. You, you, you on Earth. You're not on the sun. You're not in space. You're on Earth. You're in that position. So in that position, relative to Gaia, to Torah, right? Aries constellation still appears to be in Aries from an Earth perspective. So before you be in, before you jump in your bag and be like, oh, I feel more like I'm Vedic. I feel more like I'm um I feel like more like I'm sidereal, my sidereal sign. You already jumping into the body. You already wrong. You already physical. Because from your perspective, you're trying to act like something from another perspective. That's like you trying to act that's like you in a Pacific classroom and you're trying to see something. You're trying to see the board from a person who's sitting in the front of the classroom. You're not going to see everything that a person see 
that's in the front of the classroom. So you're going to have to squint your eyes or, or move or move someone's head that's in front of you who's sitting in the desk in front of you. You're going to have to do whatever you have to do to see the board in the best way you can. So however answers you get or whatever answers you got wrong, you got them based upon your aspect or your ability to see the board from your position. You see what I'm saying? So you can't you can't just jump in the person who's in the front in the in the front of the classroom. You just can't jump in they seat and 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 look at the board from their perspective in order to get the answers right up. You have to do it relative from where you at. So you have to do the best you can. So however the answers appear to be on the board, that's how you have to appear to get them from your position. So it's the same way on Earth. When you talk about your astrology chart and things of that nature. It's relative. You play out the characteristics relative to where you see things. So you on Earth. So the lights, if you have an airy sun, the lights you're receiving is from where they appear to be from an Earth perspective. You see what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? For you to say that you act like you're a sidereal or verdict sign is for you. It's for it's it's almost like saying. I'd rather tell time from if I lived on Venus than if I tell time from Earth. But you always going to show up late or early to whatever you're doing because you're on Earth. So you have to go with time according to Earth. If it's 12 o'clock on Earth or wherever you're at located on Earth, then that's the time you have to go by because that's how time appears to be relative to on Earth. So if you if you know the time on Venus. You're not going to go to your job on the time of where it's at on Venus because it may be wrong. You may be late there compared relative to the time it's on Earth because you're on Earth. So why are you going by time on Venus? You get what I'm saying? So that's that's how it is with sidereal, with verdict, Eastern and Western astrology. You are your Western side because relative to Earth, where you at, relative to tropical, this is where Andromeda appear to be. This is where the Aries group of stars appear to be. This is where the Taurus group of stars appear to be. Now, if you are into Vedic and you are into sidereal, then you can raise your consciousness awareness a little better. Because before before the lights came to where you're relative at for you to receive it, they came from where they're actually at. So when you say you are Aries, right, then you know that your Aries star is backed and supported and, and, and backed and supported by the Pisces energy. Because Aries stars. Eastern wise is in the Pisces location of this of, of the sky and space uh, relative to our solar system. If we was up there, now on Earth, if you was born in Aries, when it, that light gets filtered down from the location where they actually at, get filtered down to through where they appear to be from an Earth perspective, they appear to be right there from Earth based upon Earth location and position. So then, when you get the light, you receive it. You're receiving light. When you receive that light and it goes into you, it goes into the attributes of what's relative to where you're at. And if the group of stars from a Western point of view appear to still be in Aries at this time of the month, then that's the light you receive. But it's going to be backed and supported by other energies based upon that. Now, Vedic and Eastern, you're supposed to look at it as this is the generation we're going on right now. This is our soul path. So the soul path of your Aries nature, if you are Aries or whatever star you is, is still is still traveling in those energies. So just the, the Aries spirit right now may be in Pisces. The Taurus spirit right now may be in Air, the Aries energy of the sky. You see what I'm saying? So that's Taurus energy right now is aggressive, desirable, the one to initiate and create new ways of how to see and feel about things. But once it reaches to you, it gets filtered from you on Earth. So it gets filtered through how it perceived on Earth. And the stars from from an Earth perspective still res appear to be in Taurus. So boom, you are a Taurus. So you are fixated your actions. You are fixated on your own way of thinking and being practical and coming to, and coming to conclusions and making sense out of things and common sense. But the way you do that is in an aggressive way, in a desirable way, in a way that you can initiate and create new ways of how to see and feel about these things. That's what it's back to supported by. You get it, and that's how you compare it. Like people misunderstand. That's that's. How you supposed to see it? So on Earth, however something appears to look from an Earth perspective, that's your knowledge you receive from it. You see what I'm saying? So if everybody knowledge is that a galaxy look like a spiral from an Earth perspective, then from an Earth perspective, that's what it is. That's the science you supposed. To, that's what you're supposed to go by because that's how you receive the knowledge. Now on another planet or another solar system or galaxy, that uh. 
the galaxy that we're looking at may appear to look like something else because that's how it appeared to be relative to that galaxy. But we just can't be learning shit on other galaxy and think we're supposed to go and buy it that way. And then, but we're going to buy it that way, still in our in our way relative to us. And that's when a lot of uh, Vedic and tropical people get confused. Eastern and Western astrologers get confused. You see what I'm saying? I'm here to make it simple for you. These are not things to compare. So now you don't have to look on the internet to be like, which one, which sign shall I go by? You know you your Western sign. You know your Western sign is getting backed and supported by the East, the Eastern way of looking at it. Now you can kind of assess your whole adjustment. You see what I'm saying? So you're receiving the light. You're receiving information. You're receiving knowledge. Light is not something you, you're putting off. You're already the light. You already have the ability for another object or another person to see you. You see what I'm saying? You have to understand. You have to under and overstand. So now you, now you have to look at every time you look up. All the science and knowledge is that all science told you of how things is rotating and floating. And this is another thing, too. People actually think the sun is going up and down. The sun don't never go up. The sun don't never go down. The sun is in the realm of reality where the directions don't even play out that way. The sun is just going in its direction and its frequency vibration. And its ability to move is how it feels. It's vibrations. So when you when you somewhere saying the sun is going up and going down, and you build in a whole bunch of science around that. All that science is wrong. The whole stability and table that that science is on, the table that is on is wrong. The only reason the sun appears to be going up and down to you is because the earth is rotating. The earth is spinning. You see what I'm saying? And the earth is so big, the spin and the curvature may appear like it's not spinning at all to you because you're so small on it. But the earth is rotating and it's sitting on an axis. So if the sun Seems like it's up at one point in another geographical location. It's going to be down. It's going to be nighttime. You know what I'm saying? And when when the sun rises there, it's going to be dark in another location. And this is how you get the four quadrants, the four seasons, and all that shit. So whoever telling you the sun is going up and down, and whatever science you're building off that, like, okay, this must mean this being asleep now, or this must mean this being is woke. All that science is wrong. Earth is in a, is a location where there's no up, down, right, or left. You are in a location where there's no up, down, right, or left. The only reason something is up, down, right, or left to you is, is because you're relative to another object. So a, another object relative to you may be above you, may be below you, may be beside you, may be on the other side of you, may be in front of you or behind you. But it's truly, it, it's truly based on relativeness and rotation and how we relate to each other. Other than that, if I close my eyes, there is no direction. There is no up, down, left, right, unless, I, unless I'm comparing and relating it to something. So this whole concept of the sun go up, the sun go down, and all this, that, and the third, y'all, is confused. It's just relative from an earth perspective. From your location and relative from the position you're at on earth, you may be on a position on earth that's that where when the earth is rotating, you're on the other side of things. Or below or above something. So you may not catch any of the sunlight. You know what I'm saying? Because it's being blocked out and being mingled in between other objects and, and, bounce, and the light is being bounced off other objects and, and other, other lights. All light is bouncing off other light. Light is not something you're giving out and something you're in. Light is just light bouncing off other lights and you're in a, a totality of a light. Just like your spirit. Your spirit is in a body. It's in a totality of a light. So it's going to appear dark. This is why black holes appear to be black. It's not black. It's just so many different spectrums of light coming as one that it don't appear as no color. It don't appear as no light because it's all of it in one in a big and maximum energy. So you're the same thing. So when something bounces off you or when you look at your shadow, it appears to be dark. But dark, that's not a color. It's just it's a reflector. It's, it's reminding you that it's a light bouncing off your light. And then that in between this, where there's where there's an area of no light can bounce off each other, is going to appear as dark, black, shadow. See what I'm saying? This is what you need to understand. This is the realm of reality, the shape of something, the form of something. It appears to your eyes as no shape or form because you you can't receive that that much of light. 
to understand the totality of the shape and form of how that light surrounded that. So when you look at your shadow, your shadow makes out your shape and form. Because in, in between the wall and you is an area of life that light can't get to. So you got light bouncing off you, your light and your light bouncing off other objects like the wall. So in between it, you're only going to be able to see what the light can't take. So the light going to take shape and form up over with it's around. So you're able to see your shadow, your shape and form of your light. You see what I'm saying? People don't understand this. So don't think you're going in outer space to see how the planets move and to see how the sun moves unless, unless you are in one of those vessels and you got one of those kind of brains and you're big enough to understand that concept. But don't think you're going to be a little human in a spacesuit, in a spacesuit, in a spaceship with a satellite and fly into space thinking you're going to actually see how something is taking shape and form. You're going to always be confused. You're never going to be able to receive the light right. And, and you, especially people satellites, the satellites don't even go that far out of our atmosphere. It's not even that far out of there. So we're still receiving shapes and form based upon our atmosphere shapes and forms. So when the light hit our atmosphere, it's taking shapes and form of our atmosphere. So we think we think that actual light where it came from, we think it's moving like that. But really, no. The light that we receive is moving like that based upon how our atmosphere and, and the air and shit and the particles within it is moving. And the light taking shapes and form over what's moving. That's what we see moving. So we're basically genuinely we genuinely still are not seeing outside of Earth. And then and then the satellites it's an object itself. So now it's just receiving light, like a camera. It's, it's not pushing out any light. So when, you, when we put satellites up there, we're still not going to receive what we think we're looking at. So this is why we need infrared. This is why we need um, color spectrum to see behind objects and behind particles and behind shapes and forms because it's not actually receiving no light. It's just actually bouncing off light as an object the same way these planets is bouncing off light. So the satellites is not actually seeing the planets. And the only correlation they can make is from an atmospherical um, perspective. And at that point, you're still wrong. Because once the light hit our atmosphere, it takes shape and form of our atmosphere. So if something looked like a swirl, no, the light just starts swirling once it hit our swirling type of atmosphere. Our, our rotating type of atmosphere. And since our, or since our Earth, the guy that we're on, is rotating, it takes shapes and form of roundness. So all lights that we get, that we receive, where that light actually came from, it's going to appear that it must be something round or spherical. Well, really, no. It's just our atmosphere is doing a spherical type of shape or rotation type thing. So the light's going to appear that that's what it's actually doing. So you got to understand that. Uh, you got to understand that it, it, it ain't what it is. And you're not going to understand it until you have one of these vessels. You have one of these bodies. I had a fifth dimensional body. I was. I had a six dimensional brain. I was a sun. I, I could understand how a sun look compared to um, compared to how you think it looked because you're just a person. A sun looked like a person, but not a, a this type. This type of person right here is your only concept because you're 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 within a, a whole totality of a being that ultimately isn't anything else but a snake or a dragon. So any any type of information. All right, for an example. Say okay, you live in the you live in the Milky Way. The the Milky Way has a bunch of different solar systems in it because it's a, it's a galaxy. The solar system you live in is a is an overall being, right? This overall being is an animal like being. It's not a man like being. So just because you think you're a man, you are a human. No, you are engineered and mixed and mastered by you just have man-like qualities, but you're not the totality of a man. You are a mixture of a gang of things. Just like when you see snakes and reptiles and animals, they're not the totality of that. They're a mixture of a bunch of these things. So you, the solar system we're in, we're in an animal-like being. This animal looks like a snake, like a totality of what a snake or a reptile is or a dragon is. Now, within this, now in this being's world it's in, which is the galaxy, same way you're within the world. Look how big this world is. When, when you're just walking on the sidewalk or the street, you're walking across trillions of worlds. You have to understand that. So, as a, as a galaxy, um, 
as a solar system that you're in, it's a whole being. All these planetary alignments that come together creates a whole chakra, of, creates a being. Now, this being that you're in is a totality, it looks an animal. It's the totality of a snake or a dragon or a reptile, right? Now, in its world, it's in a world amongst men and other species and other things of that nature. Now, you live in a world within the snake being. So all all things in this world is snake like. Same way like you're a human now. Like say you just a you a smaller version of that, but in your totality of world amongst other worlds, you a human. So everything inside your body correlates to human qualities, right? But you can understand dogs, cats, animals, and this, that, and third, because you're mixed with a little bit of their kind of qualities. So try try to understand what I'm saying now. So as a snake like being in the world it's in, it's dealing with a lot of men and a lot of different and men and mankind and a lot of different uh elements. But it's the it's the exact versions of it. It's the it's it's these things literally. So in the mind of it, when it goes within and start thinking and have its own imagination, it starts to affect its inner world. Now you live in this world. You live in this inner world of this being, right? So if this being that you in is receiving information and having experiences and having concepts with men like creatures, other animal like creatures and things of that nature, then relative to this being, the ideas of these things is only going to go as far as how this being can comprehend these ideas. So now, you live in this being, you within the, the imagination of this being, you within, you live on the heart chakra of this being. And when you look at the sun, you're looking at the spirit within the mind within the brain of this being you're in, right? So that's how you receive the conscious awareness of the being that you're in, right? So if this being is consciously aware of mankind, it has certain experiences with it, it heard certain, heard certain things, heard certain languages, it's being forced to do certain things and, and, and within the environment and stuff like that. When the, when the blood cells and the organisms and the organs within this being receive this information, aka you, you start to see it and manifest into yourself relative to all the information and the genetic things that this being is eating and, and the knowledge is receiving and things of that nature. So now we develop the totality of a man-like being. So within this being, you got man-like beings now. So we like to think, humans like to think they're the smartest because they're men-like, right? So they're consciously aware of things. But you're really stupid. Your, your, your language, your conversation, your way of communication in the world is very dumb. Because in the totality of things, you're in an animal body. So, so the idea of how man is and how language and receiving information and all that is, is, is basically you. You're, you're the idea of it. You're the imagination of the being you're in. But you, you have to know that the being you're in is just a snake. So the farther you go of understanding what it is to be a man or to be of everything, you're just genetically modified of all these things, of all the information that the being that you're receiving is getting. So this is why you're able to look at and have man-like qualities and understand mankind to a certain degree, understand snake kind to a certain degree, understand animal nature and, and bugs and things of that nature because you're just receive, you're just the totality of how the being you're in receiving it. But I'm trying to get you to understand that the being you're in ain't the smartest being. Actually, it's, it's dumb amongst... Actually, you can compare it to how... Humans is here and snakes is here. Look at it here. Look at it how you look at it here. In the totality of things, literally, that's how the real man like beings, the real constellations, real solar systems, real men look at our solar system. Our solar system is just an animal, it's just a snake. So, the same way how you, a human, in this totality, you just look at snakes, how you just look at snakes. In the totality of things, that's how beings is looking at. Us as a overall, so us as a species and all our species within this being, we lack any kind of real knowledge in the, in the real existence. In the real world, if you was really in the God, if you was really to take, if you really wanted to be a person or an asteroid or a planet and be in one of those vessels, because I have, I'm just trying to get you to understand how it looked. When I was a galaxy, looking at other galaxies, and I was, or in this case, say I was a solar system living in a galaxy world, it looked just like here, but. I was a, a totality of a man like there. It's not even like here. It's nothing like how you look in this. You only reason you look like it and call yourself mankind here. This is really just genuinely a snake. We, where I was at, we look at this like, oh, that's, that's just a snake. 
That's as far as a snake can understand us. You see what I'm saying? Oh, this snake then grew wings. Oh, this snake then grew legs. Oh, this reptile can walk now on land. That's that's only how we looking at it. But to the snake world, the snake look like appear like it's the smartest thing in the world. Same way you within it. You think human mankind is the smartest shit in the world. No. No. I was a being a totality in the vessel that's looking at things like, okay, no, nah, it's just this is just that. And we was training that shit. And the the, the real mankind from However, it appears to be engineered within this being. It can't comprehend everything. So, what you think in this man within this being is not the totality of all things. It's not the totality of everything a man like can do. So, you just look at it as mankind, human, and a human is nothing but a uh, uh, engineered snake. You need to understand that. So, Draco and left brain and reptilians, all that—that that is you. Stop, stop hating on people or, or looking at people who tell you to be scared of this type of shit. Now, this is you. You just a, a mixture and an engineer and combination of a bunch of different shit, but that, but that is the that's the main totality of was being engineered. Same way in some in different solar systems, you have it was just pure man first, and they got mixture and mastered with other species and, and, and other shit and gained other technologies and shit to the point that that those men already got wings. They wasn't snake. They don't appear snake like. They don't. They don't appear to have. Five fingers and move around in their body like that. They probably just got one eye, you know what I'm saying? They probably just like a, a head that can see on all sides, and then a, they have a tail. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, it's different. It's just way different. I, it's like I can't get y'all to really understand. When, when you start to look at uh, fingers and things, now where these are all genetically engineered based upon where you at and what kind of being you in and what kind of information or what kind of trials and tribulations that's being is going through. For an example, um, you got everybody who, who tapping into the 13th, uh, which is nothing but the fourth dimension under a third dimensional realm of reality. So you got everybody trying to compare themselves to technology, trying to say their eyes as cameras, their brain as uh, recessors and things of that nature. Everything is turning in from natural to artificial to the point that uh, even women don't even want to want to be natural anymore. They want some artificial genetically thing to the point that people, everybody want to be computers. Everybody want to add on add-ons, want to upload things to their data and, and want to destroy and um, delete certain other shit from their data so they can have enough room to download other and upload other shit to their appearance and shit like that. So when, when you're talking about all these things that's going on, you see a person genetically modifying themselves based upon the information they're receiving. Oh, you mean to tell me I can have better teeth? Let me go get a bunch of fake teeth. Oh, you, oh, you mean to tell me I can, um, I can have better kneecaps? Oh, let me go get some fake kneecaps. Oh, you mean to tell, you mean to tell me I can have a bigger and better ass? Oh, let me go get a fake ass. You see what I'm saying? So, what you're seeing is, only thing you're doing is following the footsteps of the being that you're in. You see what I'm saying? So, this lets you know that the being that you're in is trying to receive, and 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 it, and it doesn't have so totality of things. So before you can even understand mankind, you're going to have to be in a vessel or be in some type of solar system that revolves around mankind things. Here is not. This is animal. You think you're mankind. You're just calling yourself that because because the being you're in received some type of experience or some type of knowledge around a real mankind being. So the totality of an imagination of it is you're planning out the duties of that to help elevate the being that you're in. Just the same way how a dog could be a pet to an animal. The dog start understanding, um, I mean, how an animal could be a pet to a human. The pet start to understand the vibration frequencies of the human. So when it, when it dies, it's, the frequency vibrations is able to be consciously aware enough to inhabit a human body if it wants to. Because it's consciously aware of those vibrations now. So that's what this snake is, is doing that we're in. So if you think you human, you smart. No, you're nothing, you're nothing more but a reptilian, a reptile. In totality, period. See what I'm saying? And you would have never known that if you would have never had an archangel or a being here to, to give y'all something to, to compare to understand it in a different world. To the point that you would just be satisfied with listening to sciences, thinking that we live in a vacuum and, and we're the most important and we're the only living life on this in this whole existence. And that's a whole wrong way of thinking because you will never be able to receive the right information. Flight boss, bitch, you know, for sure. Goddamn. Light is receiving. See, to see is to receive. And.